All right, guys, we just pulled up to the movie theater. By the way, this is me in the flesh. Uh, sorry if this is an unflattering angle. I'm kind of recording this on the fly. Um, so uh, I didn't record a full car prediction video, but I might just make this a short or if worse comes to worse, I'll just edit this in the podcast. Um, but here's my on the fly predictions. I've been thinking about them a little bit on the way here. But man, I got who's starting out. So I got Kevin Holland beating Santiago Ponzinibbio. I believe by a decision but it could be a, a knockout probably late, but I'm not sure. Um, but I'm going to go with decision. That's the safe pick. I got Rob Font beating Adrian Giannis, man. I think he's going to upset him. I really do. I think he's going to upset him. Um, oh, yeah. And how am I forgetting about this one? I have a sneaky suspicion. I have a sneaky suspicion that Raul Rosas Jr. is also going to get finished. I think he's going to get upset at least because, I mean, the kid's young, man. It's a big moment. He's on a pay-per-view. Man, I just, I don't know. I have that itch, but I, I'm probably going to be wrong about that one. Um, and then I got Gilbert Burns beating Jorge Masvidal. He's not going to finish him. Uh, but I do think it'll probably go to a decision. It's probably going to be boring, to be honest, because either Gilbert's going to lay him out or he's going to lay on him, let's be honest, or like try to take him down a million times and just not stand with him. But I don't know. He could lay him out, but I'm going to go with Gilbert Burns. That's a safe pick as for a decision though he's not gonna finish him contrary to popular belief then after that i got what's next the main event yeah the main event then i got israel adesanya that's a tough one guys that's a tough one uh should i get out yeah sorry i don't i'm we're we're here so but um anyways so i got um israel adesanya i believe that I believe that he could do it by decision, at least. I believe by decision he could do it. So that's my picks. See y'all on the podcast. Peace out. Hopefully I'm right. But, you know, I'm the GOAT predictor anyway. So. Okay, so a little backstory on that video. First of all, I want to say what's up to my boys and what's up to my haters, too, because I know I'm going to piss a few of you off in this podcast today. Thank you for watching anyways, though. Um, so the video. I know you guys are going to come out and say, oh my gosh, uh, yeah, good job, Trippy. Yeah, you uploaded your predictions after the fights happened. Anyone could have done that, and you said you got them all right. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I knew you guys were going to say that, and just for that exact reason, I almost didn't upload the video or edit it into the podcast because I was like, man, everybody's going to think I'm lying anyway. But let me give you a bit of backstory behind that video. I was at the movie theater, obviously, and I recorded that video, and I was going to post it. I was going to post it, but then I was trying to, I was like, I got to edit a thumbnail. I got to, you know, add tags. I got to do things. So to make you people watch it, obviously, but then the video was just so low quality. It looks like a vlog and or a vlog style video. And I was going to make it a short, but it was too long to be a short. And I was like, dude, I'll just scrap it all entirely. But then after the fights were over, and I, I looked at myself and I was like, man, I went five and oh tonight. I'm a good predictor. I, okay, yes, there's freaking holes that you can poke in my videos. Yes, I've predicted fights wrong. We all have. I'm not perfect, but I have a really good success rate when it comes to predicting fights, you know. Uh, and so, because I call a spade a spade, and we'll get into that. But, I'm going to say this, man. I have never celebrated harder than I did tonight when Israel Adesanya won. By the way, to my guys who typically watch my videos, um... This isn't going to be a happy podcast. You know, typically, I'm happy-go-lucky on these things. And, you know, I typically... Sorry for the background noise. I typically like to chill, sit back, relax, put the microphone in my face, and talk to you guys about MMA unedited and uh, uncensored, all of that. And I can just go on a ramble if I wanted to. Um, and I typically do anyways. But uh, according to some of you guys, my um, rants or my tangents are are entertaining to listen to and I appreciate that. Uh but anyways, um yeah man, so one reason why, one of the main reasons why I took the hiatus I did is because these freaking people, the MMA community is so annoying sometimes. It is so toxic and it just I just can't stand the people that's in it sometimes. And it it really did, man, uh, outside of other things. I can't blame it all on that because there was other personal issues, why I took the hiatus, blah, blah, blah. Do whatever you want. I'm here now, whatever. But 
a big reason, man, is that I just got so fed up with the people that are in this community. I did. I just can't stand bias. I cannot stand bias. I can't. And the thing is, is that I am all for somebody being a fan of a fighter and you wanting to see them win. A fan and being a bias hater are two different things, man. So I am fine with you. If you guys are going to be, if you guys are going to get a guy and you're going to support him, I have to do some self-reflect because I was biased in the past. Conor McGregor is my favorite fighter. And a lot of your favorite MMA content creators will not tell you that, that Conor McGregor is likely their favorite fighter. A lot of these guys are scared to tell you that because they're scared of getting called casual by you guys and people will start taking their predictions less seriously because oh, this guy's a Conor McGregor fan. So... I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'm a Conor fan. Another thing that I'm not ashamed to admit is that I will, I'm will. i not an MMA expert. I always say in my videos, I am a fan who's been watching the sport for a long time. I'm a hardcore fan, probably as hard as it gets, pause, who likes watching MMA and, or the UFC, rather, um, and I love it. So I like to talk about it. I like to talk about it with you guys. Every now and again, I get the sheep freaking hater, freaking weirdo that wants to comment horrible things under my videos. I just delete them or I ignore them. And so every now and again, then you get that. But man, the people who have subscribed to me are pretty present people. And you guys, some of y'all are knowledgeable fans, all right? So I just, the point I'm trying to make here is that I was biased in the, fans, I was biased in the past with Connor. But other than that, it's Connor McGregor and it's, then there's everybody else. I'm a fan of Israel Adesanya. I'm a fan of Alex Pereira. I'm even a fan of Colby Covington because I know that's coming. Oh, dude, you bash Colby. You bash Colby, which I don't. I critique Colby. I call out the BS he does. That's all I do. I don't talk crap about him. I don't bash him. I don't do any of that. I don't let my feelings get involved, and that's what makes me so mad about this community. It's like people predict. People make their opinions based off their emotions, based off their feelings. People hate a fighter so bad that they let it completely infiltrate their mind and they spread that hate throughout the community. Then you got the sheep freaking people that come and then they just indulge in it. I there's there's two things I can't stand in life, man. I can't stand a hater, whether you're just hating on the next guy or you're just, you know, hating on a celebrity. If you're a hater and you don't have any real reason to hate that person, you're a hater, bro, and I can't stand that. Number two, because I've had a lot of haters in my life. And I'm, okay, I am nowhere near the level of Israel Adesanya, obviously. Obviously. I'm a freaking everyday dude. But I get haters. If you if you don't have haters, you're not doing something right. And that's a sad thing. That's a sad thing, bro. I just don't get that. But anyways, I'm trying to strain from the point. If you think I'm talking about you, if this criteria that I'm talking about fits you, mother I'm talking about you. However, I'll say this too. If I've shown you love, then or to anybody who's watching this and think I'm talking talking about you, I am a very open to different opinions. You want to know why I rock with the weasel so hard? And we're name dropping in this video. I'll let you know because I'm really talking about just a few people, but I'm really mainly focusing on one person. Um, but the real reason why I rock with the weasel so hard, man, is that he's actually unbiased. He actually is. As much as you guys say that he is biased with the Islam Makachev Alexander Volkanovsky video, oh, because we're going to get into that. As much as y'all say that he is biased, he's actually not. Um, he, in my opinion, is kind of a straight shooter. And maybe it's his opinion, guys. It's his opinion. But it's an unbiased opinion. This one guy, F it. The MMA guru who really does hold these, like, his fan base, man, is some of the most sheep people I've ever seen. Like, anything this guy says, they just completely, anything you, anything bad you have to say about him, you're either clout chasing or you're just a hater or a soy boy or you're racist, whatever, dude. They'll control you, man, pretty much. And, you know, it's just, I can't stand him because one thing he did is that he went after the weasel for being biased, apparently, allegedly. I'm holding up the quotations. You can't see me. Allegedly went after the le the weasel for being biased. I don't see how the weasel is biased, but then he contradicts himself by saying things like, "Oh, I hate Israel Adesanya. I hope he gets hit by a bus." And oh my gosh, uh, he's a horrible person. I, I I can't root for a guy like Israel Adesanya. He's cringe and that's that. He was. I can't. I, I don't get. That's bias. That's bias. 
That's absolutely biased. Incredibly biased, but I don't see how the contradiction there, people don't pick up on it. People don't pick up on it, man. This dude is literally talking about himself when he calls people bias. Especially the weasel. That video has like 100,000 views, and it was a stretch. A massive, massive stretch when this guy has been so overly biased in the past. And then you got people who ride his nutsack. They're like, yeah, man, the weasel's biased. We, I've always been saying that. <laughs> like, But, you know, let me, let me calm down. Calm down, Triple. Let's get back to the fight. We're 10 minutes into the podcast, and you went in. The thing is, is that I don't – the main reason, man – is that I took the hiatus and I really had to ask myself because I'm like, my channel's not growing, right? And I know, or it wasn't. And you know, mainly it's because I didn't post as much, yeah, sure. But then I was like, I'm not getting the ratios I am because I, these these guys, they have this angle, not talking about any particular person when I say, well, no, I'm talking about him and then anybody else who makes content like him. They have to talk Crap, and they say horrible things about fighters. They 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 bash them, and all this. A joke is a joke. If you make a joke about a fighter, I'm not freaking sensitive. You make a joke about a fighter, that's one thing. But sitting there bashing a fighter, saying horrible things, uh, things that you clearly wouldn't say to their face, and like broadcasting it throughout the MMA community, that's what makes it toxic. I really wish the community would be more positive. I know it's a contact sport. I know it's a violent sport, dude. And there's, oh, spread love and all this. I'm not I'm not trying to be one of those guys. But, dude, I just can't stand keyboard warriors, man. That is probably the bit. I hate that the most. It's like those same type of people who go, y'all yeah, have heard me say this before, who go and comment just weird things under a fighter's Instagram after they've been knocked out. I just can't get behind those kind of people, man. And they got to sit there bash, talk trash about fighters. I just can't do that. And so I said to myself, I'm like, well, I'm not doing that. I will critique a fighter. I'll even say I don't respect the decisions they're making, which is what I said about Colby to people who say I bash Colby. I critique fighters. I will do that. I may throw a joke in there every now and then. And I might call them. I'm like, if they are doing something, I will call them out on it. That's one thing. But I'm not sitting here call. I'm not sitting here calling them out on their name and like saying these weird things. I don't see why you guys need to do that. But that's besides the point. You won't see me doing that, okay? Um, and y'all can say whatever it is. Oh man, you just you just you you just butt kissing these fighters, man. You just no, no, it's not the case. I really do. If I let's just say okay, I wanted Izzy to win so bad because of all the hate he was getting. People were saying such crazy things. Oh, Israel Asanya's not even that skilled, man. <laughs> All he does is stick and move. All he does is leg kick and run away. It, mm, I'm like, these guys, I don't know what they're watching. I don't know what sport they're watching. People are like, <laughs> you know, the fight was, you know, Izzy was really like, he wasn't dominating. He was like, you know, uh, he was barely winning. He was, you know, he was winning up until he wasn't. I'm like, dude, like, are we watching the same sport? The guy was up 3-1. He was up 3-1. Okay? The fight is... Last time I checked, the, the, the rounds are judged round by round. The fight is judged round by round. The man is up 3-1. Yes, it wasn't a blowout. It was a competitive martial arts fight. He wasn't dominating, but he was clearly winning. We can all agree. Had Alex Pereira not finished Izzy in that last round, it was going to a decision, and it was going to be an Adesanya victory. He clearly won, but he obviously he got KO'd. So it's like it doesn't even matter anymore. In this fight, people are coming out, and the hate is still going. And I pictured that because a lot of the Israel Adesanya haters gotta stick to their style, gotta stick to their guns, you know. And if you were hating, stay over there hating, bro. Stay over there hating. Go be a bias. Go 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 be biased with the rest of with everybody else. Go stay over there. Um, but people are like, man, this is why I hate Adesanya. So look. I get, I get, because I like John Jones because I'm a fan of his fighting style. I think the man is absolute greatness. The point is that I am a fan of greatness. Anybody who dares to be great, I am a fan of them, you know? I am a fan of inspiration. I'm a fan of all these things. I can't hate on another man who has the equal amount of life that I do. I can't hate on him. We both have the abilities to accomplish whatever we want to accomplish. Why would I hate? 
but people on the internet, man, I don't know, bro. It's like you guys, man. I feel like you guys are just different. Like, you guys are like, I, I don't know, man. And if I'm not talking about you, obviously I'm not talking about you. I'm not. I'm not putting everyone in the MMA community under a globe because if it sounds like I'm bashing MMA community, I am, but not all of it. Not all of it. I, I believe about thirty percent of you guys are just M are like me, fans, and y'all want to see good fights. Okay, but people who say this is one major thing that I hear the haters say: Izzy Adesanya is not skilled. He's just he, he's not as skilled. He's not that good. He's overrated because he sticks and moves. Do you not realize how hard it is to be able to duck, dodge, or whatever you want to call it, stick, move, outstrike, let's be honest, outstrike a man who is a seasoned athlete, a world-class athlete in what they do, a world-class, whatever they're trying to do, whether he's defending the takedowns and just out jabbing and moving. It takes skill to not get hit in the octagon. It takes skill to stick and move. It takes skill to land leg kicks. It takes skill to land jabs. It All that takes skill. It's an unbeatable style. People can't crack the code. Alex did it once. Okay, clear. Also, Blahovich did it. Okay, cool. That's the sport. That's the sport. But you guys, man, I just... I don't. Sometimes I believe we're not. We're not watching the same sport now. Okay, let me speed this up because I, I've spent a lot of time on this. So people are saying that they don't like Addison anymore because he celebrated and he did all that honestly, and he pointed at his kid and all this, and now that makes him a horrible person. Uh, yeah, you know, whatever. So I get people who hate John Jones, right? People were <laughs> people were picking Cyril Gone to beat John Jones because they wanted John Jones to lose so bad. They're ignoring what Jones could obviously do. And they're just like, oh, <laughs> Dominic Reyes beat him, so <laughs> Cyril Gaon's going to bully him, like, or whatever. Or Cyril Gaon's going to outstrike him. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, people don't get that this man got outfought, got outworked by Francis Ngannou, who's not a wrestler. John Jones is going to beat him. And so I get it. John Jones beat his wife. There's so many things to not like John Jones for. What is it to not like Izzy about? Because he did what he did. The man had to deal with all you guys talking so much trash about him, hating on him, all these things, getting knocked out by the same man th twice. He finally came back and he did it. And he dealt back to that kid what that kid did to him. Oh, I'm tripping. He's only five or something. Man, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't. Eh, whatever. Okay, he did it. Dish it like you could take it. Don't do it. Keep your damn kid out the ring or out the octagon if he's going to act like that. Anyways. Let's talk about the fight, man. So, okay, so, obviously, Israel Adesanya, I'm 18 minutes into this, good lord. I'm, I'm going to try and speed this up, guys, I'm sorry. Um, so, Israel Adesanya, um, clearly, I would say, clearly, was losing. <laughs> he was losing the fight, I'll be honest. The first round was semi-competitive, that could go either way. But Alex Pereira started mounting a ton of leg kicks. A ton of them. A ton of them. And I was like, man, this is not looking good. It was even one point where he wobbled up until the finish. Where he wobbled and then, obviously, um, Alex Pereira couldn't capitalize. But, man, it didn't look good. But I believe that he landed, like, what was it? Like, 30 calf kicks or something like that? Maybe that's crazy. It was something wild like that. Dude, he just kept kicking that calf over, over, over again. Izzy don't have a – he doesn't have an answer to it. He doesn't have an answer to it. That might honestly be a hole in his game. He needs to go back and drill that because if they do the trilogy, you know, that could that could be really bad, man. That could be really bad because, honestly, I'll, I'll say this. You know, he got caught. Pereira got caught and he got knocked out really, really bad. But, dude, he wasn't doing a bad job. It wasn't like he was, like – just out of the fight. No, he was landing calf kicks. Uh, Israel Adesanya was faster, at least with a lot of what he does. He was clearly the faster, better, better striker. But Alex Pereira had a solid game plan, man. He kept kicking that calf, kept kicking that calf to limit the movement of Israel Adesanya. I was going to release a video. Oh, bunch of, I was going to, sorry. I was going to release a video on how Israel Adesanya can win. And basically, it is to not stand stationary. Israel Adesanya could not stand stationary in this fight, okay? He couldn't. He has to 
um, continue to move around and continue to poke and prod at Alex, blitz him, and then get the hell out of there before you get countered. Basically fight that way or pressure him. Israel came out a bit aggressive because, man, the guy was angry to this leading up to this buildup. You guys realize that? Probably because of all the hate he had to deal with. But, yeah, he was angry, man. And I thought I thought that this fight was going to look a lot like their third kickboxing match. Or second, sorry. Was it second? Yeah, their second kickboxing match, sorry. And Izzy was going to come out and just put it on him early. And, um, well, that didn't happen. Um, but... Yeah, the first round, not, not much happened. Bunch of calf kicks, bunch of jabs. Uh, Izzy landed more shots to the head, I believe, in that round. But it was a razor close round, man. Honestly, I would. I know it's not my judging criteria, but I'd give it 10-10, honestly. Yeah, nobody won that round. It was very uneventful. Then the second round, and I have to watch the fight back, guys. Um, I did watch it just straight up live. But the second round, the calf kick started to mount up, and Izzy stopped moving. And... One thing, sorry for the background noise, guys. One thing that I was really harping on was that Izzy has to keep moving. He kept he kept his back against the cage. That's how he got finished in their last fight. And I was like, Israel cannot do that. He cannot do that. He's got to keep moving. Well, there was moments in the fight where Izzy stood there, and then I picked up on something. He was trying to stand in the pocket more. Like, it was one moment where he got real close. He, he put up a high guard. Because he knew Alex was likely going to headhunt. And then um, he put up a high guard. Alex walked right into him. Began a finishing sequence. And it looked scary for a second there. I was like, man, he's going to finish him early this time. And um, then he landed a right hand from hell. And, dude, the same sequence. The same sequence that Alex Pereira got caught in the first fight, by the way. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to make you mad when I say this. Oh, had there been, had there been 30 more seconds on the clock, Israel Adesanya would have had the same result that he had tonight. But you know what? You know what? Hey, but I won't, but I won't make an excuse for it. It happened. It happened. Okay. Anyways, so, um, yes. So he puts him out cold, man. He just right hand from hell and then a follow up shot. And it was over, man. It was over. Uh, I've never seen, like, that's the first time I believe Alex Pereira has been knocked out. And it's coming at this age. Genuinely, man, I'm going to give Alex credit because, dude, this guy, I've never seen somebody be able to land on Izzy the way that he is. I mean, he's a skilled kickboxer for sure, but, dog, that's a, I, I think that's the first time he's been knocked out. It's not the first time he's been finished, but it's the first time he's been put out cold. So, at least from what we've seen. Um, and so, um, that's not good for him, man. He's cutting a lot of weight at that age. Look, man, uh, I'm not going to blame it all on that because he still got rocked in the first fight in the same way. It's the same punches that are catching this dude. He has a, he has a, you know, and Israel Adesanya was able to land this. If you go watch any of Pereira's, um, kickboxing matches, he gets landed on with the same type of punch, with the same type of punches, the right hands. They just straight shots or it, it's the right hands the way they set it up if you're opposite stance of this dude dude you're gonna you're gonna pop him it's like you get caught with those hands and it's smaller gloves in the ufc adesanya made a really big point in the first fight where he's like this isn't kickboxing you can't guard the way that he does his defense he was so unable to get knocked out in kickboxing because of the way he would play defense with the gloves so he obviously can't do that in mma and once you're hurt there's no eight second count dude to save you, you get put out. So, does Alex Pereira bounce back from this? Honestly, it kind of reminds me of when Masvidal got knocked out like that. Dude, Alex Pereira's not a young guy. He's not, physically, he's aging well because he's still lightning fast, powerful, all that, etc. But, I, dude, honestly, what's next for both of these gentlemen, I'm done talking about the fight now. What's, what's next for both of these gentlemen is that, honestly, Pereira should move up. Why is he fighting at 185? Because he wants to fight out of Sonya? Dude, move to 205. Yes, there's a bunch of grapplers, and the 185 division is known to not to be one of the more skill-lacking divisions, but, dude, he's going to have to fight. Now he's now he's going to have to fight the uh, the um, Marvin Vittori's of the world, the Roman Delizes, and all these guys. He's going to have to fight these guys now. 
So it's like, I mean, move to 205. Move to 205, fight somebody who is on a win streak up there, and then, you know, challenge Jamal. Who wouldn't want to see a Jamal Hill versus Alex Burr, uh fight anyways? Honestly, I think he has decent success there. Alex Pereira got rushed to the top, so it's hard to really know what where his complete skill set lies, but I'm going to go on a limb here and say that he probably is going to get smacked by the grappling. I'm just going to be honest because he hasn't had to see it. And a striker, a man who landed, a man who has not landed one takedown in the UFC or in MMA until he fought Alex Pereira was able to take him down and and control him. I mean, that's not good. That's not good. Not good. So uh, that's like Ben Askren out striking somebody. Just to just to give you a, a good comparison. So um, I would say that really, man, he's an older dude. His MMA career just started, but he started it late. Moved it to a five man. Stop cutting all that weight. Stop cutting all that weight, dude. No, the weight cut isn't why he got knocked out. It probably is to why he gets rocked, but it's not why he got knocked out. Shut up. Stop trying to discredit Izzy because it's coming. Oh, he landed a lucky punch. You know, I if I harp on that, I will contradict myself because I said Leon Edwards and Jake Paul landed lucky punches, but that was more so for clickbait and for shock factor, shock value. Um, I'm going to just say this. A lucky punch when two men are fighting in the cage and they got on four ounce gloves and that is the the rules is to inflict damage on the other fighter but it's a lucky punch but to avoid contradicting myself we're gonna move on so um anyways gosh i hope the audio is good for this because i'd hate to have to re-record it <laughs> uh but anyways um didn't do a mic test anyways um so let's move on the co-main event jorge masvidal versus gilbert burns mm, keep this one short Jorge Masvidal is going to retire, but he honestly didn't retire. He, like, danced around it, but he didn't say, I'm retiring. I was waiting for it. He goes, I've been doing this for 20 years. I don't feel the same when I get into the cage, and boy, did it show. Jorge Masvidal, man. Uh, he's done, and that one made me really sad. Jorge, like Izzy, has a lot of haters, too, for what he did to Colby, and people say he's a bad person and whatever. He has more reasons to be hated on than Izzy does. I'll admit that. Adesanya really doesn't have anything other than a bunch of keyboard warriors, keyboard scientists saying that he's on steroids, although there's no evidence anyways. So, um, oh, yeah, he's a, he's got, he's got a guy I know. But, you know, I didn't know that the MMA community was such scientists. Anyways, so, um, uh, so to continue, uh, Jorge Masvidal, man, that one made me sad because, uh, dude, I'm going to miss that guy, man. If he retires, I am going to miss that guy. I want to say thank thank you to him for delivering all that he delivered over that long career. And a lot of you guys probably, I don't know how long y'all have been fans of the sport, probably just now really entered this Jorge Masvidal era. Jorge had a mini era of his own, <laughs> you know, nobody when nobody was watching him back when he was fighting guys like, honestly, when he was fighting like Cerrone and fighting like, um, you know, uh, Guys like that are, I'm trying to really think back, his career at lightweight. When he was fighting guys like Ally Quinta and, you know, those guys. Um, it's hard to think back on it. That was so long ago. Um, back when he was fighting guys like that and getting robbed on these split decisions, that's when Jorge was the best. And I really wish that he had that mentality that he does now. I wish he would have blossomed earlier, man. He blossomed late in life. It's like he matured because... If you watch any of Jorge's careers, it's like he didn't really take it serious. It's like he fought simply because he wants to make a paycheck. You know, I respect Jorge Masvidal. Like, I respect every fighter. Um, yeah, man, it's going to be sad to watch that guy go. Anyway, let's talk about the fight. So, dude, the guy, I'm going to say this, man. The first thing that goes, I got three things. When a fighter is aging and they're on their decline, there's three things that you really have to pay attention for. The first thing to go is their reflexes. It's their reflexes. It's they get hit with shots that they would have never gotten hit with. Their defense seems lacking all the time. It's the reflexes. They don't get out of the way of punches fast enough. Or 
kicks. I'm like, man, how did he not see that coming? How's he getting landed on by that? Uh, but anyways, so reflexes is the first thing to go, in my opinion. The next thing is the speed. The speed. They start looking a lot slower, a lot, a lot less explosive than what they look. look kind of look lethargic out there. Um, and the last thing to go is obviously the saddest part, which is their ability to take a shot. We didn't see Jorge get chinned, but my God, man, he was on his way. Had there been a five-round fight, he would have got knocked out, guys, um, because he was slowing down and he was getting beat up in the city. Um, and, you know, it's ironic that the UFC went back to Miami and they got Jorge on the card. I felt like this was planned. I felt like the UFC kind of knew that this was going to be his last show because the guy's old, man. He's not young. Um... But anyway, so Gilbert, the first round started out kind of uneventful. I was more so surprised on how easy Gilbert Burns was taking Jorge down. I mean, he took every shot that Gilbert shot. Every every time Gilbert wanted to wrestle, he just took him down. It wasn't really that. It was competitive. It was decently competitive. But it was more so because Gilbert Burns was fighting strange to me. He wasn't fighting like how he fought Hamzat and how he even fought Usman. It was like he gave Jorge way too much respect, way too much respect, and he didn't want to really engage. Jorge's, by the way, Jorge's game plan was very clear from the jump. Land of overhand right and sleep Gilbert Burns. Um, so, uh, Gilbert Burns' game plan was a little weird. It just looks like he just wanted to play it safe. Uh, he didn't want to brawl or exchange, and I really did think that that one was going to be back and forth until it just wasn't. <laughs> I really did think that that fight could have been fight of the night. But at the same time, I kind of expected this bad performance from Jorge. He didn't look in shape coming into the fight. They didn't show. The man got tired after a round and a half. I just remember watching it, and I was like, why is he so tired, man? I was like, this is making no sense. He gassed out in a three-round fight. That's how I knew it was over. I don't think Jorge even trained that hard for in, in the buildup of this fight. I really didn't. And, you know, I'm saying, like, oh, man, like, uh, you know, Jorge Masvidal uh, seemed really motivated on the JRE podcast, and it seemed like he was going to fight long term. But then, on the countdown, they started editing that this guy is going to be his last fight, and I felt like that was just out of nowhere. I was like, they planned this, man. I was like, this, there's no way that this is just under the radar. They planned this. But, you know, I, um... I'm going to miss that guy, man, but yeah, man, he's done at the top, bro, because, I mean, Gilbert could have easily dominated him, uh, and he did, he did, it wasn't, it wasn't a close fight, Gilbert won all, every single round, he won all three, it wasn't, he, Jorge lost the first, the second, and the third, almost got finished in the third, Gilbert could have finished this man, he was landing shot, hard shot after hard shot, Jorge was just being tough and just kind of, come on, egging it on, uh, but, man, that was Jorge. Jorge could have performed a lot better because even a tired Jorge was still landing on Gilbert. And Gilbert, man, has no chin. Because there was a little exchange, man. I can't remember exactly where it was. But there was like a little exchange where Jorge in the third round looked very... He had no pop in his shots. Looked very lethargic. He was, he just looked exhausted because he was. He landed like a, like a sneaky, like, overhand right. But it was like very weak. And, like, it connected on Gilbert, and then Gilbert immediately dug in for the takedown because he felt it. I was like, man, this guy right here, bro. I was like, this guy, man. Gilbert just wanted to just hold him down and just hold him against the cage. So, I uh, man, he won the fight. So, it's like, well, what can I say? But, you know, uh, he could have finished him. I don't know why. I was screaming. I was like, Gilbert, just go ahead and finish him, dude. Like, if you're trying to get in line for the title shot and jump the line, finish Jorge. That would make you a star. Well, at least closer to one. Finish him. Knock him out. Then you're known as this exciting, barn-burning fighter who will finish anybody and you'll scrap anybody. P Dude, but you know what? Gilbert showed his skill set in this fight, so I'm not even going to trip. But Jorge is done at the top, man. He simply got tired after a round and a half of grappling. He looked horrible. His reflexes were bad. He got hit with... Gilbert was out jabbing him. What on earth? He's the striker, and Gilbert was out jabbing him and could have finished him in the third, but just decided not to. I have no idea. Gilbert played it really safe, and I didn't like that. But However, he showed his complete skill set. Gilbert Burns is the dark horse of that division. He beats Leon Edwards, or he can, sorry, and he beats Colby Covington, in my opinion. He has the potential to be the best 
at that weight class. Very broad skill set. Moving on. Kevin Holland. Uh, always rooting for a guy like Kevin Holland, man. Uh, amazing personality for the sport. Knocks out Santiago Ponzinibbio. And also Kevin Holland's the hometown uh, hometown guy for me. He's from Fort Worth. That's where I'm from. Um, knocks out Santiago Ponzinibbio. Look, man, the fight was also very uneventful. Kevin Holland, though, dude, showed his – he's – Honestly, he showed his skill set as well in this fight. It wasn't eventful. He kind of had like a Adesanya style. Honestly, his style, like game plan, just land a bunch of kicks, even though he was getting out leg kicked. I mean, what was up with the calf kicks tonight, man? This guy was – Jorge landed a bunch of uh, calf kicks on Gilbert Burns. It's like everybody was just eating calf kicks tonight. So, um, you know, Jorge Masvidal – I'm sorry. No, not Jorge. Kevin Holland was aiming for that Jorge fight, but, man – at this stage in his career, he's going to beat Jorge. He's, he's going to beat him. Um, it's only striking, though. So, Jorge has a big chance to just outstrike him, but he's not. I don't think – I really don't think he will sit there. If Jorge gasses out in front of Holland like that, whether it's three or four rounds, especially if that's a five-round fight, he's knocking Jorge out. Uh, and I don't want to see that. Um, but, um, anyways, actually, no, I'm down to see that fight. I just don't really want to see Jorge go out like that. I don't want to see either guy go out like that, but, you know, man, would that be crazy? Anyways, so, uh, yeah, man, Kevin Holland just really played it safe also. He needs to fix that calf kicking issue, though. There's a qu- Kevin Holland is a work in progress, man. He's getting better. Honestly, people aren't saying it enough. He's getting better every single fight. He is. He took a beating by Wonder Boy that he didn't have to. He did not have to take that beating. He could have beat Wonder Boy, honestly. Boy, they just – dumb decision. He showed his IQ, showed that he has good defense, and obviously we already knew he had that nuke of power. Now, Santiago did good in this fight as well. There's, it's not just um, all good on Holland's end. Santiago did good countering. He landed some big shots on Holland, Really has really good footwork, you know. But he couldn't take Holland's shots, and, and I knew he couldn't. Holland, Holland didn't really engage as much as I wanted to see him. I'm like, dude, see him too? I'm like, dude, go hit him. Go hit him. I know he's moving, and I know he can counter you, but you can take his. He can't take yours. It was clear. It was clear. Kevin didn't land a ton of clean shots like that, but boy, when he did, he rocked Ponsonivio every single time. Rocked him every single time. Very uneventful. Got it at the last minute. I'm very happy for Kevin. Kevin should fight. Honestly, if Jorge does stick around one more fight, Jorge should take that fight, honestly. He really should. And then, let's move on, drumroll please, Adrian Giannis versus Rob Font. I called this. I called this. This, out of all the ones, I knew that, I kind of knew that Font was going to beat Giannis. Giannis, man, is a good boxer. Really good. But, I watched his fight, oh gosh, I forgot the guy's name. But I watched his fight. This guy, this particular guy I'm talking about, throws a lot of jabs and a lot of kicks. He threw a ton of kicks. First round, started slowing down, and Giannis finished him in the second. If you guys know who I'm talking about, please comment his name. Threw a ton of kicks, a lot of movement, and a ton of jabs. I seen that fight, and I was like, dude, I think Rob Font is going to beat him. The jab. Rob Font sets up punches perfectly off of that jab. Rob Font is a good boxer. He's a really good boxer. Giannis is too, but Giannis is more of like a, he's more of like a, um, how do, how would I explain him? He's like a explosive in a way kind of guy. He's like, he doesn't just run into you like Jorge Masvidal does, but his shots, everything he throws with 100%, and it's like, he throws a little more, like more hooks, more hooks to the body, and he's not as how do I explain it? it? It's really hard to explain. Giannis is a really good skilled striker. He's a really skilled boxer. I just knew that the, the jab of Font, Giannis is very open to jabs and kicks, really. Uh, I knew Font wasn't going to throw a lot of kicks, but open to jabs. And I just thought Rob Font would play it more safe. I thought Giannis would go in there, not overconfident, but like smelling his own piss and try to go in there and knock Rob Font out, even though he's never been knocked out before. I thought he's going to go in there and just, you know, it seemed like he was unaware that the jab was going to have that much effect on him. And he got knocked out. Dude, like, his knockout was damn near just as bad as Alex Pereira's was. At least it was 
more funny. I laughed. I'm not going to lie. It was wild. Uh, and he got knocked out by Rob Font of all people. So his big step up in competition, his big moment that he could have had, it, it ended <laughs> disastrously for him. Uh, honestly, honestly, man, just go back to fighting. Just, just build yourself back up, honestly, for Giannis. Because he has all the time. He's a young guy. And I like Giannis. I do. Rob Font was the guy who would be in trouble if he lost this in that way. Giannis isn't in any trouble, man. The hype train is a little stunned a little bit, but, you know, it's not over. Dude, just go build yourself back up. You're young, and you have the skill. Giannis has the skill. He just needs to tighten up that, that defense. Maybe get a rematch uh, later down the line and, you know, go get him. Uh, I believe in Giannis. I like Giannis a lot. Uh, I was a fan of that guy before anybody really even knew who he was. I was watching his fights in the prelims. And he's, a, he's just on a pay-per-view card in Miami. Look at him. On a big pay-per-view. An exciting fighter, too. He has a lot of potential, man. Um, but moving on. Okay, so... Um, now we move on to the Raul Rosas Jr. I will just say this. I had a hunch in my bets. The whole build-up to this fight card, I knew that Rosas Jr. was going to go out like that. I thought he was either going to get finished or he was going to get beat. He started out so fast, almost had him, gassed himself out. It's not that he doesn't have heart. It's not that he's overrated. He is inexperienced, and he's younger, fighting on a huge stage like that, pay-per-view, all that. And I believe that he just wanted to go out there and just run, steamroll him like how he said he was going to. Needless to say, there's not much to say about this fight. But if I'm Rosas Jr., dude, develop you some freaking hands, man. Get, get some striking. Get some kickboxing in you. The wrestling is good. You can take down anybody in that. Let me see. You're taking O'Malley down. You're taking Yon down. You're taking you're taking a lot of these guys down. However, if they get your number and they stop you and they stop the takedown in the SES community. Yes, guys. I know that he's a long ways away from these type of guys. But for future reference, if he fights a guy who isn't as timid as uh, Christian, if he fights a guy who is confident enough to go after him, he's going to get laid out if he does not develop at least a hella decent jab. And he needs to work on that cardio. So that's two areas of improvement that he needs to do. Get better at striking and get better cardio. If he gets that, he'd be all right, man. He, and he's got plenty of time, guys. He's 18. The kid is younger than me. So he's got plenty of time, man. Plenty of time. And that's all I need to say about that. The hype is a little dead, but you know what? It's okay, man. 18, you just go back to the drawing board. You, He's still at that. He's at that age where he could train all day, all day long. I remember when my, I, my I'm, I say that like I'm just way older than him. But he's at that age, man, where he's honestly probably still going through puberty, where he is, he can work out all day long as much as he wants to, five times a week, and train as much as he wants to, man. He's not, it's not like he, this guy's 30 and he's, got kid and he's dude he's he'll be okay he'll be okay um but <clears throat> shout out to kevin gaslam and chris curtis putting on a banger and kevin gaslam getting back in that win column good job uh but anyways i want to know what you guys think i have no questions so i'm just gonna wrap it up here i want to know what you guys think sorry for the 20 minute rant um but i needed to get that off my chest uh it's been your trippy i want to know what you guys think uh and i'm out man